Hello everyone, my name is Alex Goldie and today I'm here because I was asked by Lars Kukimur to create a tutorial on his behalf. He wanted to do it himself, but due to time constraints asked me to do it instead. And this is a response to a Reddit post that he read and forwarded to me. So he had prepared a project that I can use to demonstrate four different methods of instancing an asteroid with different textures on them. So let's take a look at the four different methods to instance an asteroid with different textures on them. Now there are several advantages and disadvantages with these methods. Let's take a look at the first method which is to do it all from code. We have our main scene and our main scene only has a script. And inside script we're loading 10 different textures. And the reason we have an export texture on the top here is just to show you that you can also preload an image using export which will allow you to actually see the image in the inspector here or even change them and override them if you so please. We also have a template and that is the asteroid scene which we are going to reuse. Instead of having to load 10 scenes, we're loading 10 textures and that may or may not be better but this is just one way of handling it. So inside ready we are instancing our template into a new asteroid variable and then we're running a function called setup and insert texture inside it. And what this does is, if you look at the asteroid scene, this is just a sprite node with a script. And inside the script, we only have one function, which is set up. And this allows you to set the texture. So each time you're instancing a new template, you're setting up the texture you wish to use on this asteroid. And then you just add it to the scene here. So if we were to hit play now, we will get three different asteroids. The advantage with this is, of course, being able to reuse one scene, which may or may not be complicated. The disadvantage with this is... By loading all these different images this way, you'll have a tough time handling different collision shapes if you wanted to have collision shapes on these asteroids. Not to mention, it can look a bit messy in script loading 10 different textures this way. So let's look at our second example, and that is server code with export. And the difference between this and the first one is simply that we are using export to load each and every one of these textures. And the disadvantage is the same as the first one, and that is you'll have 10 different lines of code to load the textures, not to mention you'll also have to manually add each textures inside the inspector here. Because when you originally add this variable, all of these will have null, which means you'll have to load each and every one of them. Now we get to the asteroid folder and then you're selecting them. Now the advantage with this method is if you are inexperienced with programming, or perhaps you have an artist with you that helps you on your project. Using this method will lessen the chances of screwing up some code if the artist were to mess around. And the method we do this is the same as the first example. So let's jump over to the third example, and that is sprite animation, or animated sprite. So let's take a look, and inside our game scene here, we have a script which loads only one scene from the editor. And we are using this asteroid scenes to instance it into a new asteroid, and then we just set frame. And this is the key difference between this and the other methods. Not to mention, we don't have to load a lot of textures inside the code here, which is also very nice. So, setting frame is as it sounds. All we do is set the frame of an animated sprite to get the appearance you want. The disadvantage is the same as the first and second example, and that is that if you want the different collision shapes, it will be difficult to handle. You'll have to make some complicated code, perhaps, or make, make another scene to handle that. Who knows? So if you take a look at our asteroid scene here, it uses an animated sprite node, and that is done by setting the frames. Now, this would usually be clear, and you would select New Sprite Frames, and then select it again, and select Edit. Then you get this window up, which allows you to add or remove sprites. So you would click here, if this was empty, to create a new group. You would select this folder to select those images you would want to use. And then these would be added below here. So here you can see, Frame 0 has this image, Frame 1 has this one, and so on. This is a cleaner way of adding these different textures to one scene without having to load each and every one of these textures manually from within code. This is a cleaner and more efficient way of doing it. So this is even better than the last method if you were to ask me. However, that being said, there is a better method. And that is our last example, which is the factory method. And it is as it sounds. It's a factory. It produces different asteroids when you ask for them. We have an instance of our asteroid factory scene and insert it into a variable called factory and we're reusing this one variable to generate asteroids so in this case we're generating asteroid with index 0 index 3 and index 8 so if we were to look inside our asteroid scene here we only have one function inside our asteroid factory script and that is generate asteroid 
and it takes in an index which is used to duplicate the child of this index. So if index were 0, we would return asteroid 1, and this returns the entire node. And what this means is, using this one asteroid factory scene, you can manually set up each and every one of your asteroids. So if I wanted a collision box around asteroid 9, I could just add a child node. Collision, polygon, and let's just draw a rough, a rough bounding box here. And what this means is, if I were to instance this asteroid, every child node and every script and every setting and configuration added to this asteroid will be added with it. So if I were to go back to our game scene here, let's inside the script, make sure this is loaded and it is as the third one. Let's hit play. This one has a collision box, but these don't, because it keeps the property of each individual asteroid, which is why this is amazing. So if I were to turn on visible collision shapes so you can actually see it, hit run again, you can see our collision box is there. So, if you take a look at our game call again, you can see it's much cleaner than any of the other examples. We don't even have a line up on top here. Only thing we're doing is instancing this, or pre-rolling this. In fact, I would probably prefer to use on ready outside, so we have it from any function we want to run it from. So this is definitely my preferred method of handling this, because you never know when you want to add extra properties or children of an asteroid. So using this method allows you to also just control every asteroid from one scene. You can easily see every asteroid, select them, and manipulate them the way you want to. So thank you so much for watching this. If this was helpful to you, please hit the like button, subscribe to see more, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye